Hello, welcome back to WTSF, where I answer questions from the Street Fighter Reddit with in-game examples. I find the common themes of the week on Reddit, you then vote for which ones you'd like to see more, and I make a video based on that theme. This week the most popular vote went to Street Fighter V move properties. First question by Loja is special cancel issues. I've been playing fighting games for ages, but for some reason Street Fighter V has given me more input issues for cancelling standard buttons into specials than I've ever seen before. Recently I picked up Sakura in Street Fighter V, I keep having problems with that up fireball coming out when I fish with low kicks. And Loja's included the screen cap uh, of the only time that they're getting it successfully, which is with this input here. So first things first, in Street Fighter V, this actual input display isn't telling you the full story. And that's because of a convenience that the Street Fighter V developers have put into the game called Negative Edge. It exists in a lot of fighting games, but it's quite prevalent in the Street Fighter V shows. And what it means is if you hold down a button in certain circumstances, when you release that button, it will read that button again. So even though I'm holding down medium kick right now, if I do a quarter circle and release, it will do a fireball. So what's probably happening here is that you're doing the crouch medium kick and the cancel all perfectly fine, but you're holding down the medium kick for too long. And what that means is when you're letting go of the medium kick to press the heavy punch, it's actually beating the heavy punch to the input window. This is a really common thing to see in Sakura play. So what you're hoping for is something that looks like that with a fireball going straight forwards. However, if you hold down that medium kick for a bit too long, you are gonna get that up fireball and at some ranges that will miss completely. So the trick here really is to just let go of the medium kick earlier. This is gonna take a little bit of muscle memory. I would say as a rule, if you've started the quarter circle motion, you already want to be letting go of the medium kick. You'll notice in any cancel, when you actually do do the input and you'll see there, we've got the down back right through to the quarter circle forward. That final input of the button actually duplicates the last directional input. And again, this is evidence of a lot of input leniency in Street Fighter V. It really wants to give you every opportunity to get your cancel in. Unfortunately for you right now, that's actually making it easier to accidentally put the wrong input in. The other thing is that you mentioned in the question that you're doing that because you want to fish from Crouch and Medium Kick into the fireball. So you can use some of that input leniency to your advantage there and do really aggressive buffering. Buffering here being just doing the quarter circle motion immediately after the medium kick. Again, you're going to have to get some muscle memory in there to remind you to let go of it quickly. What that means is you can do the entire cancel into fireball in neutral and if it's going to miss, it's not going to actually release the fireball at all. However, on impact, you will get the fireball every single time. This can leave you in some disadvantageous situations if you accidentally throw out the fireball there on block. If you want, you can set the practice dummy to random guard here and then get into the habit of doing a crouch medium kick quarter circle forward and either pressing the heavy punch or not pressing the heavy punch depending on whether or not it hits. But doing the entire thing isn't a bad place to start. There may be times when you actually do want to use the negative edge as well. Here you can do a crouch medium punch and a fireball with a single input, for example. And when you get into the deeper side of options, selects and longer combos stuff like that can really come in handy next question from sing 95 what can i do against people who just sit there and use crouch light punch as a barrier i play karen i feel completely hopeless trying to deal with this tactic it feels like they have an impenetrable barrier around them my pokes get beat out and i don't know if it's something you can learn to do consistently but personally i can't whiff punish light attacks so the term whiff punish in there referring to doing an attack in the recovery frames of the opponent's move when that move is missed completely. And what you'll notice with a lot of light attacks is that the recovery window here is very, very small. So we've got reuse light punch there at seven frames, crouch light punch recovery of five frames. Now, when you take into account everything that's going on from the input delay, on top of that, you've got the connection latency between you and your opponent, and then you've got your reaction time on top of that five to seven frames is not really a reactable thing that you should be teaching yourself to whiff punish into. This has actually been a popular talking point this week for anyone watching Daigo's stream where he's been learning to actually whiff punish certain mediums on reaction. And even there, a lot of people are debating whether or not it's worth the effort to learn reacting to some of these medium attacks. When you are learning to get into the habit of whiff punishing, start with the really obvious things that can be reacted to. Start with whiff punishing things like specials and heavy attacks. But if you're trying to get into the habit of whiff punishing light attacks, you're only gonna frustrate yourself. The other thing there is Karen actually has a great option for doing exactly the same thing here with standing light kick. And you'll see that very commonly used both offensively and defensively. So if you can't punish the recovery of people throwing out lights in neutral, what can you do with it? First thing to consider here is move priority. So you probably already know if the active frames of two moves come out at the same time, a medium attack will beat a light attack. Likewise, a heavy attack will beat a medium and a special will beat a heavy attack. So one thing you can do in these scenarios is throw out very active high priority moves. So you see here stand heavy punch, Crouch heavy punch, crouch medium punch. These moves all have comparatively more active frames and they all have higher priority than a light attack, which means that you'll get a counter hit if they clash. The other thing there, if we go to the character data here on showyukin.com, you can see that that crouch heavy punch 
has four frames and is also a crush counter move. So if those two moves do collide and you do get that priority, there's going to be a crush counter and that's going to put you in a great situation. With all that move property information on board, it becomes less about the actual move properties at this point and it's more about how you're actually playing. That means spacing yourself in such a way that you can do some of that stuff without getting punished for it yourself. Because the other thing there is if you are going to throw out a heavy punch, you are going to have a lot of recovery frames and you are likely to get with punish. And the other thing there is the old rock paper says us they're focusing on protecting you from advancing using lights, that means that they're focusing on their ground game. And it's important that you test that theory by jumping up. If you can't get them thinking about what's going on in the air, they're gonna stop protecting themselves on the ground as well. So then you can test them advances again by dashing up or walking up. And most characters in Street Fighter V are gonna have certain things that then allow them to negate a little bit of the neutral as well. But in terms of dominating that space, picking a character like Karen, you're probably in a good spot. You just need to find out what tools you've got to your advantage. Next question by Mario8067. Can Ryu DP safely right away after wake up or does it have to be an EX DP? And judging by the wording of this, it's that they're getting dragon punched when they're trying to meet him. So we'll set Ryu to wake up with one of any of his four dragon punches, all with reversal timing. And this allows us to test the invincibility of each. As always, the fastest way to do any of this is to just study a frame data and look at it there. If you check the frame data, you'll see that it's light DP, it's throw invincible, it's medium, it's invincible, it jump ins, it's heavy, it's invincible, it projectiles and attacks, but not from the first frame. So you will still get meated there, and it's EX is the only one that is fully invincible from the first frame. So Meaty and Ryu's light punch DP here, you can see he gets counter hit straight away. However, if we try to throw him, we will actually get blown up for that. You'll also notice that we can do air attacks on Ryu in this state and counter hit him. Moving on to the medium, you'll see the same thing here. He's gonna get counter hit. We can also throw Ryu continuously in this situation because of that medium DP. We switch to the heavy punch option, again he's going to be pretty useless in all of these situations. And because it's not invincible from the first frame we can actually do some quite daft stuff there as well. The EX one is the only one that's going to stuff every option. Here you see regardless of attacks, throws, as long as he spends the bar we're going to be in trouble at this point basically. Obviously you can't just choose to EX DP every single time, it's going to cost you meter, it's not always going to be at your disposal. There's better uses for it. So if you do have a good read on what the opponent's going to be doing on their wake up. If they're always favoring meaties, you can always go for an attack invincible meaterless light dragon punch, for example. In your case, it sounds like that might be what's been happening to you that's led to you asking that question. And maybe that means that you're being too predictable with relying on meaties and not mixing it up with things like throws or even backing off sometimes just to see what they do. Most dragon punch style moves have an equivalent of this. Check out Urian's headbutts and flash kicks and all that stuff as well, just to see what it is that you need to be doing. Personally, as a grappler, I'll always always go in if they haven't got a bar and then it's down to them to guess the right dragon punch for the option that I'm going for. Next question from Sago K22. I have issues figuring out how to play against Zangief and have some questions. Number one, how do I counter his V trigger where he spins and sucks me in? Currently I'm blocking all the way until he stops spinning and I DP him. I'm not sure if this is even a punish since I play on low level. So this is one of the examples where frame data will get you part of the way there. So we have the V trigger one here, Cyclone Lariat. And as much as it says it's plus three on hit and minus six on block, that doesn't tell the full story for this one either. If we try to observe what we've just seen in the frame data in the game, we'll see two different behaviours. So raw activation here, we will see it's going to be minus six on block for the Zang. And on top of that, the opponent will finish quite close up like this. That means that the opponent is plus six and very close up here, which is a bad situation for Zangief to be in. However, if we do the same activation and hold down the V-trigger for either part of the time or all of the time, you'll see there that it actually ended up at minus three for Zangief and they finish further away. This means your character has to have at least two different things that they opt for if they are able to block that. One that's quite advantageous and up close, and then one that's a bit safer and further away. Sometimes that option is to do nothing at all. If you're not blocking that same raw activation, you'll see there that it's actually plus three to Zangi. So you need to be confident of whether or not you were blocking. And anything else is gonna be a form of knockdown with Oki. And that's whether they just knock you down or if they do something with spent meter as well. So using a combination of the frame data and in-game practice, allows you to minimize how many things there is that you have to do that really there that you've got three or four things that you have to actually think about the first time you experience this stuff in a match it can feel like a million different possibilities two how do you counter his command grabs especially when he's downed and wake up grabs me. so the first thing that everybody tries you're going to be throw invincible when you jump and that's the normal throws and command throws the thing is there though that most command throw characters are going to have something that allows them to take advantage of you just jumping all the time whether that is a command throw or something else, they've often got something quite spectacular there to take advantage of it with. In fact, a lot of command throw characters have things built into their character design that let them take advantage 
of people that are going to jump and get out the way of command throws. Nothing better demonstrates that than Bonchan versus Alex Vaya here at EVO. So as much as jump is an option, be very conscious of it not being your only option. An interesting alternative option here is actually the backdash, and that is because the backdash actually has a couple of airborne frames in it. Although again, be very wary of that because there are a couple of very specific ways to defeat that too. And the last part there, when he's close to me or his command grabs guaranteed, his super seems unreactable up close. So command throws can't be text for starters. If you're mashing your throw, it's not going to get you out of their command throw. And with the critical art specifically, you can see here it's one of the few moves that has one frame of start up and the first two frames are invincible. So if you are going to meaty or if you're trying to do a throw on them and they're waking up and they just mash that out, it is going to get you. Bear in mind that the same goes for the EX spin and pile driver here which is throw invincible for the first six frames so with some grapplers even if you try to put them into a 50 50 with your own throws or even your own command throws they might have an answer for that unfortunately as with most things against grapplers there's not going to be one perfect solution to these problems you're going to have to measure the temperature of your game have they been doing certain moves at particular times do they have meter? You're going to have to take all of that information on board. And last one here by Starship. Does anyone know the frame data on how long each charge character should charge? I know it's different for each character, but I can't seem to find anything that shows how many frames each one should be held past the base game charge moves. So first things first, on FAT Online here, you just have to click on any of these moves and you can actually see the charge times from there. So if we go to Somersault Kick Medium here, you see here in the extra information, it takes 45 frames to charge. Nice thing with Guile there is that that is very universal. But if we go over to Chun-Li here, you'll see Spin and Bird Kick here, it takes 40 frames to charge on the light and takes 45 frames to charge on the EX Spin and Bird Kick. So it's not just different between each character, it's also different between some moves with some characters. It's particularly important with Chun-Li, where the properties of a normal Spin and Bird Kick are completely different from the properties of the EX Spin and Bird Kick. The last thing you want is to reach for your anti-air and get a normal Spin and Bird Kick out instead of the EX. And that is everything for today on WTSF. We've now hit 100 subscribers on this channel so thank you very much for that to celebrate i'm going to give away either a copy of ultra street fighter 4 or street fighter 5 and whichever one the winner chooses all you have to do is leave your favorite street fighter win quote in the comment section below on this video and i'll do a draw on a stream later this week to give away a steam code for that so i'll either see you in that stream or I'll see you next time